So let's talk about de-risking your gap year. You're taking a year to explore a potential interest in a programming career. You might be a career switcher like B or like myself. Congrats, B. I also have a background in economics and I switched over. This will work whether you're a career switcher or maybe you are a high school graduate and you haven't picked up college yet. So we're gonna cover six tips of managing the risk of your gap year. This will be a longer video. In the previous video, we talked about maximizing the value of your gap year. Minimizing risk and maximizing value are not the same thing. What is the goal of your gap year? The goal is to understand whether you do have that interest in programming, whether you have a technical knack and possibly even landing a job. That's a different objective compared to managing risk. Managing risk is minimize the chance of failure or in the case of failure, minimize the cost of that failure. We're gonna talk about uh, direct cost and then given my background in economics, I'm gonna be talking about opportunity cost as well. Very important. First tip, we'll start with a simple one. Define your goal, your plan, and your reason why. Write them on a piece of paper, physically write it, and get an accountability partner that you tell this to verbally. This is good old motivation hacking. It works for a variety of reasons. Writing it down just helps you remember. Making you think through the plan helps you write a better plan. Making you communicate it to another person forces a feedback loop where you write a better plan. And then social incentives kick in where you wanna look good to this person and you will just have a little bit more skin in the game. Plus, if you're not that serious about it, you won't even go through with this step and you'll be able to fail fast, which is actually a really great thing in cutting risk. Tip two relates to B. So B switched from sales and you might switch from any other industry, which means you might have a current employer. Tip two is leverage your employer educational benefit. Did you know if you work at Walmart, you can go to college for a dollar a day? That's cutting so much risk because you're spending so much less. Program details vary here. Ask your manager and check your company policy. Does the tuition benefit apply to a coding bootcamp or an online course? And that brings us to tip three. Don't pick a random coding bootcamp or a random online course. Pick a high quality one. That begs the question, how do we know it's a high quality one? Well, I have the answer for you. I have a PhD in economics where I studied this stuff. Go to coursereport.com, sort the coding boot camps by most reviewed, and you need to pick a coding boot camp that is in your location, in your country, and has a score of 4.25 or higher on the five point scale, and more than 400 reviews, or a Fortune 50 learning provider like Google, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft, and so on. These are called prestigious coding boot camps and prestigious learning providers, and they are significantly correlated to your high ability outcomes, your labor market outcomes, because surprise, high, uh, employers know about these people. Employers know about these people. So is it really any surprise that they're like, oh, like we know Amazon, like we trust them, and so then you'll have a better job search outcome. A random coding boot camp is not even correlated to job search performance. So don't pick a random online course don't pick like a YouTube video where the guy calls it a boot camp. You need to go to coursereport.com and follow the prescribed method to find a prestigious or a highly reputed coding boot camp. Tip four is go beyond these correlated reputation mechanisms that correlate with getting a job and get a straight up job guarantee. At the time of recording, Springboard in the United States is a learning provider that has a job guarantee. Highly encourage you to check out Springboard or browse through boot camps that have this high reputation and look in particular for a job guarantee. Again, if you go to coursereport.com, they should make a note of that on the learning provider details page. I told you I'm gonna give you six tips. I'm actually gonna give you seven. Sorry about that, I hope that's okay. Stay to the end, I guess the last one is awesome. I'm supposed to say that, right? You gotta stay all the way to the end so that like the algorithm loves me. The truth is even a coding bootcamp, even if it has a job guarantee, is a large commitment for some people. So let's de-risk that even further. You should sign up at ladderly.io and Ladderly gives you a step-by-step -step checklist. So this is the de-risking tool, is use a structured checklist that will help you kick off your portfolio right away, and you will get your feet wet coding, and you'll be able to determine whether or not you like coding. So with the Ladderly.io checklist, one of the items is gonna be check out free Code Camp or Code Academy, and these are semi-formal online courses. They're not really in-depth, they're not gonna get you a job, but they're a good way to get your feet wet with some semi-structured learning. And if you take these and if you're like, yeah, this is really easy, I wanna like do the more serious stuff, now you've got a really green flag to dive into one of those boot camps. If you take these and you're like, I can't even get through HTML and CSS, like it's so bad, that's our, like maybe you shouldn't be doing a coding boot camp for HTML and CSS. <laughs> Laterally is gonna further help you de-risk because there's a Discord with a bunch of people on there and you can social network. Social networking has reinforcement for motivation, but it also just improves your job search because now like you know people. Um, having social connections on LinkedIn or whatever is gonna improve your job search. That's another kind of de-risking. 
Prestigious Coding Bootcamp was tip four, de-risking the Coding Bootcamp investment itself with Laterally and Free Code Camp. That was all tip five. Here's tip six. This doesn't apply to very many people, but it's gonna be really important for those that it does apply to. And that is don't wait until you graduate. If you're considering a gap year after graduation, maybe you're a sophomore right now, why don't you just try coding like over the summer? Or if you have the spare time, and I realize not everyone does because of extracurriculars, but if you have the spare time, why don't even you just try like coding over some weekends? So you can knock out the Code Academy or Free Code Camp stuff uh, before you even graduate high school. And you'll have a really good signal at that point. You'll have a really good idea. Am I ready to dive into a boot camp immediately or not? If you get a score less than three, it's a red flag for a gap year. It doesn't mean you're not smart enough. It has to do with conscientiousness, work ethic, the ability to self-motivate, self-start, and stick to a plan. If you get a score over four, that's a green flag. And if you're between three and four, it's sort of a yellow flag. It's still moderate risk. Self-studying is hard. Less than 5% of people that try to become a programmer on their own just by going through YouTube videos and online courses will be successful. Coding boot camps have a higher success rate, but coding boot camps are really intense and rigorous if you go to a good one. And if you don't go to a good one, it's not gonna help you get a job. So the truth is, if you get a grit score less than three, college might be an ideal fit for you because it's a bit slower paced and it's just a better fit for some people. If you enjoyed the video, tap like, follow the page, look forward to any feedback in the comments or better yet, sign up for free at laterally.io and I'll see you on the Discord.